Howdy, Ags. Got a little question for you. How do you go from having a long, long time CPA profession to retiring and then seeing a need that small business entrepreneurs need to have strong, consistent, and valuable CPA advice to help them grow and expand their businesses? We're with Marie Kelly, Fine Tech Society Class of 1983. She is the CEO of Kelly CPA and an Aggie 100 nominee. C- congratulations. Yay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for joining so us, happy Marie. happy to be here. Th- Thanks that, for inviting me. That's great. Well, let's just kind of jump right into it. We mm-hmm. learned a little bit about you, but, but tell me, why did you want to start your own business? Have you always been had an entrepreneurial spirit? Um, I guess so. I've, I've, I've always been a CPA. I mean, my dad drove me down here and said, be an accountant. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and so yeah. I did. And, you know, Talos is a real entrepreneurial place. And my whole career was focused on small business and CPAs. And mm-hmm. I ended up being a partner in a really fantastic large firm and retired and spent about five years helping small businesses. And I think that taught me a lot about starting a business too. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, taking care of the customer in front of you, yeah. you know, following each lead. And so, but I found though, working in-house is that their CPAs really had difficulties handling a small mm-hmm. uh, entrepreneurial business, right. all the aspects of a big firm, you yeah. know, so um, we had a good time. So I had, so I said, you know what, let's get started. So, so I started in 2016 and um, we are wow. now one person. Aggie 100. Aggie 100, Aggie 100, 100 yes. Years. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So how has being an Aggie coming here to Texas A&M, how has that geared you towards uh, the growth that you've experienced? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, saying hello, looking at people in the eye, treating people with respect is a big part of any part of having a business. And I think being honest and truthful um, is is another part. And Mm. I think that that's a real, I think I learned that from A&M, you know, and then of course, tradition is such a big part of A&M and tradition is really a big part of business too, you know, doing things the way you're supposed to do them or learning from things that happened in the past. Yeah. Well, Marie, what has been the single biggest challenge to to your growth? I obviously as an Ooh. Aggie 100 nominee, you you have cracked that nut and you've overcome those challenges, but what has been the, the biggest, biggest you know, the biggest challenge is kind of, you know, there's a lot of DIY out there. You know, there's right. there's yeah. everything by Google, right? right? And so in the beginning we have tried, you know, doing things different ways. Finding the right tools to run our business efficiently and effectively to keep our costs down has probably been the biggest issues in a professional service firm that I didn't think would be because yeah. people need data right away. Um, but cost control so, is critical. Yes, but yeah. we are, you know, we are now going to have in processes and procedures mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that everybody, you know, it's, I'm really good at making everybody feel special. I just want their process to be special too. Yes. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what's What's out there on the horizon for you? What's your big, hairy, audacious goal for Kelly CPA? Well, what I think my big goal for Kelly CPA, and it really had, we had a big tax law change last year. Mm-hmm. And what I'm finding is, you know, I came from a large firm. We read the law. We learned it. I found that a lot of, I'm not saying that my competitors didn't, but, you know, my goal for CPA, Kelly CPA, is for my clients to follow, understand, know the law, and take the greatest advantages. It seems that in the last yeah. few years, it's always been, well, so-and-so said that DYI thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I am S, I don't have to pay tax and this and that. And the new law is very interesting. It helps small business. And I think that my goal is for us to provide education so that they continue to trust us on the best way to manage um, their own finances, pay their taxes, and do their accounting. So. Yeah. Well, Marie, one thing that we've heard over and over from entrepreneurs is understanding and focus on your client. So as we kind of roll into the lightning round here, yes. uh, t- tell us a little bit about your perfect client, the client that not only gets the most out of you, but the client that you enjoy. Can you describe that? Well, I mean, first of all, I love clients that are passionate about their business, yeah. you know, so that was, that's number one. And I become their biggest fan. Um, a client who is going to take and spend the time and the effort and the money to get their accounting and tax in order. If right. you want to kind of shortchange that, then we might not be a big fit. Okay. Clients who yep. want to know the laws on sales tax. Sales tax is changing the world yep. because it's now, you know, you have all these states. These states are like different countries when it comes to tax. Mm-hmm. So a perfect client for us is one who really wants to know and understand it, um, mm-hmm. wants to pay professional services, 
will, you know, we will continue, you know, a lot of times a creative, we have a lot of creatives. Oh, I just want to be creative. I don't want to know the numbers, but then tell me the numbers. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, a client for us is one. And then, um, you know, know the rules, have the right tools, pay their bills. <laughs> but most do. So if you were standing next to yourself, mm -hmm. right, when you graduated Texas A&M, you're, yeah. you're up on the stage. So let's say that, that you're back in time right now. Okay. What would you tell yourself? What advice would you give to yourself back then that you know now? I think that, you know, <clears throat> I guess it's that, you know, you really do have everything you need when you leave Texas A&M. At one point at the large firm, I was in charge of education. And I, I used to joke that all you needed to make somebody smart was to hand them a diploma. Yeah. But it's like you, I really, you know, Marie, you had what it took. You had what it took to start your own business or to mm -hmm. go through life. I mean, I'm, yeah. I've had three great children. I've had a great life. I've been many places. And Texas A&M gave me what I need. I had wonderful friends from A&M. Yep. So mm -hmm. I had everything I need when I left. I didn't need to worry that right. I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. Well, Marie, what's one thing? We've learned a lot about you, but what is one thing that the Aggie Network doesn't know about you? Well, very interesting. My mother is Peruvian. And, um, wow. Peruvian. well, that's Peruvian. not the one thing, but okay. let me tell you. So she came here because her sister was going to marry an American. Oh. So her dad sent her to Philadelphia. But the, and, and uh, two of them married Americans. But <laughs> he loved Texas A&M, my grandfather, and sent my uncle in 1946 to Texas A&M from Lima, Peru. Whoa. Wow. And wow. That's, that's why I had to go to school here. Yeah. So there my, wasn't a choice. You no, know, my mom said, you will be an Aggie. And my dad said, you will be an accountant. Uh, and they were great people. So I said, what's to do? But my uncle, um, what's very interesting, I don't know if you know, Peruvian history, became communist. They lost their land. And because of his A&M oh. degree, he ended up being um, the minister of wildlife fishery and had a job and did very well, even wow. though he wasn't part of the government. He had a job. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one that thing is people so fascinating. don't, yes, yeah. don't know yeah. about me. Another thing is I just... I ran for uh, student president of my class when I was a sophomore here. What? It was a very male-oriented school yeah. back then, but it was really fun wow. to run against a core guy. Yeah. Marie, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. That's Didn't awesome. win, but that was fun. Yeah. So that's good. anyway. So how can the Aggie Network help you? How can how can we use that? Because we're, we're such a tight-knit community, right? And Aggies help other Aggies out. How can we as Aggies help you? Well, I think the more that people can be come to us, the more we can help them, we can see how we can help them. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, I definitely. love talking to people who, have, who are struggling and I can look at their tax or their accounting situation and help them. It also helps us learn. We might not always be a good fit for everyone, but um, I think, you know, providing education on your accounting and your tax is really what we want to do. So somebody who's struggling with their okay. finance, you know, figuring yeah. out, starting out, figuring out how, how, where they are, how they're doing, right. um, you know, and you know, I talk to a lot of people. I can answer a lot of questions. So. Awesome. That's great. Great. Yes. Well, Marie, thank you so much for taking the time and, and just sharing so much value and wisdom with us today. Ags, if you have not connected with Marie, you need to make sure you do that. We'll make sure to have all her contact information in the show notes below. But really uh, appreciate everything. Congratulations again on oh, your Aggie you. 100 win. Yeah. And uh, to, to all the Ags out there, look forward to connecting on our next episode where we'll continue to, to bring and connect Aggie entrepreneurs. Until then. Thanks and gig Wow, what a great episode that was. Um, Marie's Marie's, awesome. She's great, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, Peruvian. <laughs> I, I, I never would have known that. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. So what was your biggest takeaway that you had there? Well, seeing as we are filming this in Kyle Field, uh, when she said the traditions yep. that she learned at A&M, and it wasn't so much the Aggie traditions, but mm -hmm. there's a fact of how she said, okay, look, traditions are something that we do over and over again. And, and she was able to take something that is so special mm -hmm. to every single, I mean, I don't know how many traditions we have, but every Aggie knows that we have got a lot of traditions. And she was able to take that and to transform that, to weave that into the fabric of her business yeah. and to say, we're going to build processes and we're going to build support and we're going to call it traditions. Yeah. That was really special to me. Well, and she said honesty, right? So it's, uh, that goes along the lines of we, Aggies don't lie, cheat or steal. That's right. right? So uh, that's pretty awesome. My biggest takeaway was uh, she kept repeating DIY. There's a lot of DIYers out there. And honestly, I probably am one of those DIYers. So I, I really identified with that. Um, and we've got to know when to give things up, right? We've, we've got to know when to step out of the picture and give it to professionals like her 
And so that was my biggest takeaway really as an entrepreneur is to ensure that I do exactly that. Take that advice and start handing things out. To the professional, let, let them yep. do it. So. Yep. Well, well, thank you all so much for joining us for another episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. Uh, from Greg Martin and Chris Hunter, we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, join us next time as we as we continue to uh, encourage, embrace, and, and, and connect Aggie entrepreneurs one with another so we can learn from them as they hack their growth, but then we can also support them and support you achieving your your goals. Until next time, thanks again.